The Professor, a bourgeois Parisian with the soul of a revolutionary, a lover of culture, but capable of spitting at a camera. A man of extremes, turned into an icon, capable of touching glory by beating Hinault himself and wallowing in misery by losing a Tour de France by only eight seconds. Do you want to know the story of Laurent Fignon, the free verse of cycling? Follow my wheel and I'll tell you. As he defined himself, he was a handmade cyclist in an era of mass production. His approach to cycling was unique. He always rode according to his feelings. Despite not always being the most elegant cyclist, his passion and charisma were undeniable. A man of extremes who loved culture and was difficult to handle, both in his life and on his bike. A temperamental cyclist, he alternated great victories with unnecessary outbursts. His bohemian appearance brought him the nickname of The Professor. But while one imagined him reading a book on a Parisian cafe terrace, he surprised us with bizarre reactions, even spitting at a Spanish television camera during the 1989 tour. But for all that, he was an exceptional cyclist. As a cyclist, Fignon had no one quality that stood out above the rest. He was good on all terrains. What distinguished him among other cyclists was his temperament and his tireless fighting spirit. His impertinent character, due to the rage and fury he carried inside him, rebelled on the bike inside an impulsive, non-conformist, and unruly cyclist, full of charisma and with an overflowing personality. Fignon stood out for attacking at unexpected moments and his ability to keep us on edge in every stage he raced. But his story was also marked by struggle and adversity. The professor was born in Paris in 1960. His relationship with the bicycle began when he was 15 years old. At that time, he already had to face a reality that told him that it was too late to start and that his classmates even made fun of his bike. But Fignon, giving a first taste of what was to come, won his first race. From that moment on, Laurent Fignon would never be teased again. At the age of 21, he entered the professional world with the powerful Renault team, led by Cyril Guimont and captained by the great Bernard Hinault as the future star in the making who would succeed the great champion on the throne. But the fight between them was to be inevitable. In his first year, he wore the Maglia Rosa as leader of the Giro d'Italia for a few days and then, towards the end of the season, succumbed to what we might call Fignon-style bad luck. During what is now the Paris Tours, his bottom bracket broke and he lost control of his bike, which caused him to crash. His career encompassed great triumphs, but also these moments of disaster. His first great success came during the 1983 Tour de France. The absence of national idol Bernard Hinault presented an open race. Fignon took yellow after fellow Frenchman Pascal Simon succumbed after six days of agony racing with a broken collarbone. At the age of 22, Laurent Fignon, a Parisian by birth, was on the verge of glory. He was the great promise of cycling with a promising future ahead of him. However, the French didn't take his victory for granted. They said he wouldn't have won the tour had it not been for Simon's misfortune, and they may have been right. But the truth is that he overwhelmed his rivals. His round glasses, blonde hair, yellow handlebar tape, and the word Renault on his chest quickly made him an icon. The young Bohemian had won the Tour de France in his first appearance, in the style of Anquetil, Hinault, and Merckx. Nineteen eighty-four was going to be Fignon's big year. He should have won the Giro, but he was convinced that the Italians had united against him to ensure a local victory. He had to fight against a whole country. The Queen stage over the Stelvio was diverted with the excuse of snow. Photographs taken later by helicopter showed that the road was clear. A few days later came the decisive time trial. Fignon was angry because a TV helicopter flew too close to him and caused a strong headwind. He ended up losing the Giro to Moser. Misfortune was knocking at his door for the first time and at the worst possible moment. Barely a month later, he was to face his greatest challenge, beating the almighty Hinault during the 1984 Tour de France. 
Pinot was returning to the Tour after leaving Renault, racing for the La Vie Eclair team. Everyone expected the Badger to teach that impertinent young man a lesson. However, that 1984 Tour was an exhibition for the Renault team, which won 10 stages. Five of them were signed by Fignon, who was clearly superior to his rivals, leaving his compatriot Hinault more than 10 minutes ahead with memorable moments such as his victory on La Plane. In third place, as the first American to reach the Tour de France podium, we find a young Greg LeMond, whose paths would cross again during the fabulous 89 Tour. The young Frenchman had won the Tour for the second time in his short career, and the gates of heaven were opening before him. The future was his. He had beaten the all-powerful Hinault and was in the running to compete for a place in history with the great names of the past. But as there is no glory without sacrifice, misfortune came knocking at Fignon's door once again. A knee injury, from which he took almost three years to recover, took him away from what were to be the years of domination of the Gaelic rider. When he returned, Fignon didn't cope well with not being able to give his best. He brought out his irascible side. He went so far as to throw a jerry can at the medical car. In the 1986 and 1988 tours, he was in a bad mood. He quit both races. This dark side of Fignon made him even more attractive to the press and fans. There were flashes of his former genius, but they were rare. In 1988, he won Milan-San Remo, meeting Mauricio von Driest to the finish line. Instead of savoring the moment, he berated himself for not being able to outrun the Italian. A year later, he won the same race in a very different style, rode alone to the finish. Months later came the famous Tour of 89, the Tour of the Damn Eight Seconds. The Frenchman proved stronger than the American Le Mans during that tour. He was the one who tried the hardest, but cycling is often cruel. And that day, the day of the Paris time trial, Fignon experienced cruelty at its worst shape. 51 seconds was separating the leader Fignon from Greg Le Mans, who opted for engineering by presenting a triathlete handlebar and an aerodynamic helmet, something groundbreaking for the time. The Frenchman went out without a helmet, with his ponytail in the wind something very much criticized by the French experts. Before the start, few were those who didn't make fun of an image more typical of an astronaut, as they said. Everything in Paris was ready for the big party. The Parisians were going to celebrate how one of their own had won the most important race in the world of cycling, against nothing less than a representative of the mighty United States. In just 25 kilometers, it was impossible to reduce that lead especially when Fignon had won the previous time trial. But the commemoration of the 200th anniversary of the storming of the Bastille became a day of national mourning in France. It wasn't Fignon's day. The differences in favor of the American predicted a heart-stopping finish as it was. Only eight seconds were enough to decide the victory in favor of the American. The image of Fignon sinking to defeat on the Champs-Élysées while Le Mans' celebrated victory remains one of the most memorable in the history of cycling. The contrast between Le Mans' joy and Fignon's despondency was brutal. We could see in the Frenchman's face the harsh image of misery. The Parisian never managed to overcome that defeat, the smallest gap in the history of the race. The first years of the 90s marked the decline of the great French rider. He left his last signature during the 1992 Tour, winning, dressed in the colors of the Gatorade team, the stage that finished in Mulhouse, thus ending an extensive career full of successes and misfortunes. Despite defeats and ups and downs, Laurent Fignon is still remembered as one of the most charismatic and passionate cyclists who ever lived. His unique style and his way of riding at the limit inspired fans and the following generations of cyclists. Laurent Fignon was a cyclist who lived intensely every race, leaving everything along the way. His life was full of exciting moments and unforgettable challenges that made him a cycling legend, and his legacy will live on in the memory of fans forever. Thank you very much for getting here. If you liked the video, subscribe and click like. You can collaborate with us activating a super thing. And if you want to continue enjoying with the best cyclists in history, don't miss this.